Hello, everyone. I'm Adam Abu Abile, a graduate research assistant in doing my master's at Bradley University. And I was working on the investigation of uh, interface sheet transfer in engineered cementous composites under the supervision of Dr. Mahmoud Sultani and Dr. Yoon Si Lee, along the help with Rajesh Belmakanda. So um, my presentation is gonna follow the following agenda. I'm gonna start with talking about the research objectives and <clears throat> explain the interface shear transfer mechanism. Then I'm gonna explain the isobesco four-point bending shear test and explain the test setup that we used in our experiment. Talk about our material properties, the test variables and the test matrix from our investigation and share with you my results and conclusions for the investigation. So to begin with, the main purpose of our investigation was to compare the performance of uh, the engineered cementous composite, ACC, in, interfa in interface shear transfer to conventional concrete. And the second part was to investigate the effects of the presence of steel reinforcement in ISD strength, specifically in ECC members. Um, to explain the interface shear transfer, it is a mechanism that carries the shear forces across a reinforced concrete interface. For, uh, for example, the cast in place deck and bridge girder perhaps is the most um, important example where the, the bottom layer of the deck uh, and the girder uh, tend to want to slide off each other horizontally when the load is applied on them, which causes horizontal uh, forces along that interface. And technically, shear interface happens when um, happens where there is zero moment and a shear force along the interface. Um, so, looking at it at a closer look, uh, in the left we see that. Uh, diagram which represents the two layers of concrete. And the layers are originally uh, rough, which uh, causes some changes in the height of the concrete member. So when the load is applied, the, uh, the two layers tend to want to slide horizontally, which causes a horizontal deflection. And when they want to slide off horizontally, they reach a point where they have to overcome the higher um, spots of the concrete, which is represented by my knuckles, that causes a vertical deflection as well, which causes stresses to happen in the tensile direction and um, along the steel reinforcement represented by these two um, bars. So looking at the shear capacity compared to the interface slippage, at the beginning, we have both the cohesion of the, co of the concrete member along with the friction contributing. However, as the slippage increases, the cohesion of the member starts to break and dips down. However, the friction actually increases until it reaches an um, asymptote and flattens out. After a while of horizontal deflection, and once that vertical deflection starts to happen, we see that well action taking place and contributing in resisting that uh, slippage. And it starts off um, after a while and uh, continues to grow until it stabilizes. So to, to connect this with the previous example of the girder and the deck, those three forces are actually what contribute to the interface shift uh, strength of that connection and the combination of all of these represent that uh, connection strength. <clears throat> so the test that I used to uh, test this phenomena was the isobesco four-point uh, bending shear test and it consisted of two halves of um, the concrete uh, member that were are represented by layer one and layer two in this diagram with applying these four loads. It is to be noted that um, the load P is much greater than P prime and the reinforcement runs along the member um, which is represented by these red lines. Uh, the, the most important thing about this test is it actually depicts the uh, shear in the interface very well where we have a maximum uh, shear at the interface point, which also um, happens to be where there is no moment. 
And this is very uh, useful to test the interface uh, shear transfer and the capacity of the member to resist uh, deflection in that area. Um, so my test setup was uh, using uh, the compression testing machine from our laboratory. And um, we used the compression testing machine with two spreader plates and four rectangular rods that, used to, um, that were used to concentrate the load at the points we wanted. And the test would be run until the member would fail and we would record our maximum load and the deflection from these, uh, from these tests. So my material properties consisted of the compressive strength of, con of the concrete we used and the tensile strength. Uh, for, for the most part, we did a lot of uh, the compressive testing because the ICT model actually in Ashto that we were using is based on the compressive strength of concrete, which contributes the most to the um, IST capacity of the members. And our, <clears throat> our values were within the expected range and was all good. However, it is to be noted that ECC is very good in tensile uh, strength. And that comes in because of the microfibers that are used instead of aggregate, which causes the concrete fibers to hold on to each other better in tensile and perform uh, better as shown in the results. Um, so moving on to my test variables, the study was focused on the presence of interface reinforcement, which could be either zero reinforcement or two number three rebars. Um, this can be seen in this picture where um, the two members are cast and the reinforcement is embedded in the member and it runs along the whole member, um, which will be contributing to the capacity of that member. The second variable that I was testing was the concrete material, which could be either normal concrete or uh, the engineered uh, cementous composite. And um, that can be a little bit seen by um, seeing fibers in the member here and seeing aggregate over here. The last um, variable that I was testing was, was the interface roughness condition, and that could be either roughened uh, interface or smooth interface. Um, for this example, actually, this was a roughened interface, and we can see that some parts are actually still holding on from the ECC bar to the normal concrete part and vice versa. Um, moving on to my uh, nomenclature of the test specimens, we used a symbol that was consist consisting of uh, three letters and two numbers. The first two letters of the, uh, the first two letters of the symbol were representing the type of concrete used and that was either engineered cementous composite uh, represented by E or the normal concrete represented by M. The third number represented the uh, condition of the interface and that could, uh, could either be smooth interface represented by S or roughened interface represented by R. The first number represented the presence of reinforcement where zero represented no reinforcement at all and two represented two number three rebars. The second number represented the amount of uh, the replicate identification for our specimen because we created three different replicates for each, um, for each of our specimens to eliminate any random error or inconsistencies. So we created eight different types of specimens that total out to 24 members in total. So, when we analyzed our results, we looked at the ICD capacity of each specimen first, and uh, we came up with the following plot. I split the plot in three different parts where the first part represents the results for smooth interface with two interface reinforcement. The second part represents roughened interface with two, reinforced, uh, two re interface reinforcements, and the third part represented the roughened interface with no reinforcement. The first thing to notice is that all of the members in the first two parts of the plot show similar IST strength, which is, um, which is expected. 
And this member in particular is the most conventional um, type that we see for this connection. However, when looking at the rough end interface with no reinforcement, the member EMRO, which represents ECC normal concrete rough end interface with no reinforcement shows a lot of potential. The first thing is it is higher than both of the other uh, members in its section, and it represents almost 60, uh, 50 percent of uh, the conventional uh, the conventional way of making that connection. To see that in in pictures, um, I couldn't have the uh, uh, this member. This member actually represents the EMRO with no reinforcement at. Uh, failure, which uh, this is the sample after we tested it and it failed. We can see the cracks that happen at the interface due to the load. And after we uh, split it, uh, we, we get those two cross sections and we can see where uh, the concrete is actually embedded in one another. So this part would be ECC and normal concrete. Um, moving on to the stiffness results, the following uh, Plot also represents um, the stiffnesses where it's split in three sections as well. The first section is smooth interface with two um, interface reinforcement, roughened inter the second part is roughened interface with two reinforcements, and the last part is roughened interface with no reinforcement. To begin with, um, we can show the, the plot shows that uh, the results are also similar in the first two parts. However, when looking at EMRO um, by itself, which is again ECC and normal concrete with roughened interface and no reinforcement, it shows around 90% of the conventional um, of the conventional way uh, of the conventional way of making that connection, which would be normal concrete, normal concrete, roughened interface with two rebars. Um, it is also important to mention that ENS2 actually shows um, very low stiffness compared to other uh, types, which is interesting to see. Um, so this picture actually shows a member of uh, ENS with two reinforcements. And the reason um, I had to put this member to show, it's actually comparable to the um, uh, roughened interface with uh, with no reinforcement deflections. However, that member actually ends up in two pieces, so I couldn't show that. But in this one, it shows how little deflection actually happens um, if that were to be the ECC NC with no reinforcement and roughened interface. So in conclusion, uh, the following are the results I got. So in case one, where we have smooth interface with two number three interface reinforcement, all of the specimens show similar ISD strengths, which is um, the conventional that will always happen. Um, case two, we noticed uh, in the roughened interface with two number three interface reinforcement that NC, NC, and NC, ECC showed similar strengths only. And in the last case, which is where most of um, our attention was at the roughened interface with no reinforcement, we found that ECC NC showed greatest ISD strength and stiffness compared to the ECC, ECC, and NC, NC. And um, we found out that ECC NC showed ISD strength and stiffnesses that were almost 50% and 90% of the NC, NC roughened interface with two rebars interface at the interface reinforcement. So that actually boils down to the um, strength, the extra tensile strength coming out of the ECC uh, that comes from the fibers and the extra cohesion that comes from the aggregate in the normal concrete where it shows a lot of potential to study farther and look into because having uh, zero reinforcement, just roughening that interface following the code at a quarter inch was um, sufficient to make up uh, what the conventional way does with two bars of reinforcement. So all in all, the ECC NC uh, combination actually shows that it is an adequate alternative for, for all of the three other scenarios. 
Uh, thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Tom, for the presentation. Um, the first question uh, from audience says, how do you control the degree of smoothness and roughness of your specimens? So when we actually casted the members, we would um, flatten out uh, the top surface uh, of each half and uh, that would be considered the smooth um, interface. And um, for, so for, for the roughened interface, we would actually um, make, make grooves in the concrete that were a quarter inch deep. And that is actually following the ASHTO code for the IST model. Okay, thank you. Um, so please feel free to write down your questions if you have. Meanwhile, I have uh, another question. And uh, in your specimens, I saw that there is uh, no ECC, ECC with two reinforcement. Uh, so there's a specific reason that we didn't have because that is gonna make the uh, specimens to be complete. Probably one of the last slides I've been showing the results. Yes, so... Um... In, I'm sorry, right here. So the reason we didn't have ECC, ECC with reinforcement is we actually know it will probably be the strongest out of all. However, that's actually not the scope of our investigations. We were, investiga we were investigating the um, effect of that roughness on the interface and the presence of steel mainly, which um, testing ECC, ECC with reinforcement would have given us no extra input on that. All right. So, so maybe I can ask another question. Uh, if, uh, so could you kind of explain that uh, why NC-ECC combination uh, material wise is doing good for the strength and for the stiffness? So um, I think it mainly comes from two sources. The first one is the extra tensile strength that the ECC mixture provides, which is um, adding to that capacity of the connection. And the other thing is the aggregate in the normal concrete that adds to the cohesion forces um, in the member. And the combination of um, that extra tensile uh, strength and the um, aggregate in the normal concrete creates that um, extra strength. Very good. Well, so uh, thank you, Atan, for the presentation.